Medicine Bow is a small town in southeastern Wyoming. According to the 2010 census, it has a population of 304. Medicine Bow, like many other towns across southern Wyoming, was established as the result of the Transcontinental Railroad. The railroad built a depot, water stop, and coal loading facility on the Medicine Bow River. Later, Medicine Bow became an important livestock shipping center. In December 2000, the final radionuclides rule was published by the Environmental Protection Agency with an effective date of December 8, 2003. This rule set maximum contaminant levels, or MCLs, for radioactivity in drinking water. The ruling involves all community water systems, regardless of size. The groundwater that serves Medicine Bow is of good quality, but it contains natural levels of radium-226 and uranium that exceed the MCLs for those contaminants. Because of the uranium, it also contains radon gas. My name is Charlie George. I'm the Utilities Director for the Town of Medicine Bow, uh, Chief Operator for the Water Treatment Plant, Backup Operator for the Wastewater. Uh, we've got a population in town of 100, or 273. We serve approximately 160 taps. Uh, <clears throat> our, our main treatment process is the removal of radionuclides. Uh, we produce approximately a million gallons a month. Our high month is 1.5 to 2 million gallons, which would be in the summer, the hottest months. When we first learned about the uh, radionuclide problems that we had was in 1989. Uh, we were then put in a administrative order by EPA to start the process to try to find a treatment that would remove them. At that time the town uh, picked an engineer to start to study on which treatment process may be the best for the town of Medicine Bow. Uh, they chose the ion exchange process uh, under the recommendation of their, their engineer at that time and EPA. It allowed us to not have to treat all the water that went through the plant. We could blend some of the water to bring our MCLs down to acceptable levels. Uh, I got in touch with uh, DEQ, EPA, and talked to them about the, uh, the level of operation that you had to, or level of license that you had to have to operate this plant. We did some checking and some talking with them and decided that it's not really a level three plant, it's actually a level two plant, which makes it easier for the operators to become licensed to operate this plant. That is one good thing about the plant. There are groundwater plants that are level three, level four, that make it almost impossible in these small communities to find somebody to, that is able or willing to go the extra time to become a level four operator. The raw water is treated with two ion exchange media in succession in large pressure vessels. A cation exchange media first removes the radium. This is followed by anion exchange that takes out the uranium. Levels of radium and uranium in the raw water exceed MCLs, but not by much, so the medicine bow plant only treats part of the influent water and blends this with untreated water. This prolongs the life of the exchange media. After radionuclide treatment and blending, orthophosphate is added for corrosion control. Then the water is chlorinated and pumped to the distribution system. The plant is actively vented to remove radon gas. The ion exchange media are regenerated automatically with brine solution, according to how much water has passed through them. Spent regenerant solution flows via the sanitary sewer to the wastewater treatment lagoons. When it's running and running right, you know, it's just a matter of doing our daily checks. When you have a problem, then it, it becomes more involved where is it electrical problem, is it uh, a hydraulic problem, pump problem, whatever. 
one of the problems that we've found with the ion exchange system is that it's, it's very expensive to maintain and operate. The resins in the vessels have a use approximately seven years. Every seven years you have to change out the, the ion and cation resins to bring them back up to uh, removal acceptance. We just went through this process approximately three months ago. Uh, it is a, like I stated, it's a, it's a very expensive process to have to do. If you have to save money within seven years to pay for this process, the rates for the residents are just outside what they can afford. So. We have to we have to try to find a better technology for the removal of radionuclides. So our quarterly operational expenses uh, at this time is approximately seven thousand uh, dollars. You can do the math if you you take one hundred and sixty taps, and you can see what we're up against as far as the day-to-day -day or monthly or quarterly operational cost of the plant. That's why I say it's so important to do your homework up front when you decide on a plant. It may do what you need it to do, but can you afford to operate it? Go through this process, insist that you have a cost analysis, insist that your population will support this type of system, uh, do not think that in five years you're going to have the population to pay for it. You may have a decrease in population and you're stuck with this same treatment. And you have to trust your engineers to make that decision.